These next 10 tips are what makes the difference between this render and this render. Let's go. Always set up the composition for the first step. This makes sure you don't waste effort on parts that won't be captured on the camera or the angle of the render in this case. So once you have come up with an angle that you like, just go to view management and save the view. Once you set the angle, you have to take care of the aspect ratio. This is where you decide where the render will be used at. If you want to use the render for presentations or widescreens, just keep it at the default full HD option. But if it is for most social media feeds, click the custom resolution and keep it at 4x5 aspect ratio or 1080 by 1350 resolution. If it will be used for shorts, or stories, or reels, use a 9x16 aspect ratio or 1080 by 1920 resolution. Also, most of the time you want to make sure you're using the two-point perspective. This will make all vertical lines in the render actually be 90 degrees. Unless you're doing an aerial render or bird's eye view, because using a two-point perspective in that instance will make the image distorted. So instead, use a three-point perspective. Once you get some of these basics down, make sure to check out some fundamental composition rules like the rule of thirds where the frame is divided into three equal parts horizontally and three equal parts vertically. Usually what you want to emphasize is going to be placed at the intersection of these lines. Once you set up your composition, I usually go for lighting. The default escape sun intensity is way too high, so make sure to lower it around 7-8%. to 8 This is just one of the basic steps, but if you want to take it even further, make sure you're using an azure eye. An azure eye is an image taken in real life, which is basically in 360 degrees, which would wrap around our whole model and give us a realistic background plus a simulation of real life lighting. We can find these images in polyhaven.com for free and we can import them by going to Enscape Visual Settings, Sky, Skybox and basically importing it into our model. Once you import it, make sure to check the box of make the brightest point in sun direction and once you rotate the HDRI, this will make the brightest point actually act as the sun which will make our image much better. Keep in mind that these make most of the difference in exterior renders. However, they can be very effective in interiors as well, since most of the interior materials reflect the colors that the your eye emits. If you're doing an interior render, usually the default sun is not useful at all in Enscape. So turn off the sun completely, open the Enscape Objects tab, choose the spotlights and place them outside directed in our opening. Make the beam angle as wide as possible because that will definitely help into making the shadow softer and this will be used as a fake sun. Almost all of my interior renders follow the same exact procedure and this exact method has generated all of these images in the screen right now. Usually in architecture projects, you will have multiple different angles and camera views within one file. So when that is added with all of these different settings, which all need to have different variations for different views, everything gets very messy. So here's the solution. You set up all of the views, then for each view, you set up a new visual setting preset with the exact same setting you would need for that camera. Then go to view management and link the preset with the camera view. This will ensure that every time you change the camera, the settings will change as well and they will be synchronized. This saves so much time and headache throughout the whole process. The default spotlights in Enscape have a very bad light distribution when used in interiors. So we can fix this by using IES profiles. These are files that are taken from real life manufacturers that have calculated the real life distribution of certain light fixtures. So what we can do is we can import these files into our render. Well, I mean, how much more realistic can it get? I mean, to do this, we just need to go to islibrary.com and we can choose whichever one fits best in your scene. After downloading it, we can click on our existing spotlight and check the box of load IES profile you can see that it can make quite a big difference on how the render looks. Usually in exterior scenes, I like to do a lot of irregularities in landscape. And when I started using Enscape four years ago, all I had to do was to put vegetation in manually, but you don't have to do that anymore. If you go to the Enscape tab, you can choose the multi-asset placement library, you can choose the asset library, and you can choose the multi-asset placement tool. Right there, we have three different options. Placing multiple assets in a line, in a circle, or with a bucket tool, which places them in a whole surface that we have selected. So to do that, select a few trees or bushes and select the surface. And over here, we can see some more options like density, which is basically how much objects do you want to be placed within that area, and randomization, which helps a lot on making renders more realistic, which brings us 
to the next point. I see this in a lot of renders all of the time. Bushes standing the same size, same rotation, or chairs fully placed in a 90 degree angle in dining rooms. But the truth is you rarely see this in real life. So instead, try to randomize these kind of objects, make them a bit more irregular, change the size of bushes, change the rotation of them and the chairs in the dining table. To create realistic renders, obviously you need to modify materials. There are a few different categories in Enscape Material Editor. We have the albedo, which is basically where you place the raw texture itself, the height map, which is basically where you had depth to the materials so they're not looking flat. You also have the reflection section where you add reflections to the materials. And obviously, finally, the transparency map, where you obviously kind of uh, choose how transparent you want the material. Now, if you had to modify all of these materials yourself, it would take a lot longer, plus it would be a lot harder to get each one of these aspects done correctly. So for this reason, just download PBR materials online. PBR materials stand for physically based rendering, which means that those materials come from physics based in real life. Once you download them on an online site like texturebox.com, you can basically import each map into each section, which would automatically fix the depth and the reflectionism without having to do manual work. Setting up these PBR materials is all good, but if you want to take your renders to a whole nother level, you have to use imperfections. Imperfections in rendering can be used like fingerprints, smudges, or even scratches. Here's how we add them. I usually like to draw with the freehand tool, a surface within the surface that we already have, and then I'm gonna add the imperfection within that surface. Then I duplicate the material that we already have. Then I add an imperfection map that I found online in the reflection section. This makes the render look a lot more regular. And remember that our goal here is to make the images feel as close as possible to real life. And perfect surfaces are not something that usually exists in our living areas. I don't know about you, but I have personally never had a good experience with the Enscape grass. The first step to improve grass is to get this image from the link in the description, which we're gonna use as a replacement for the default grass distribution. To replace the default grass, go on disk C in your computer, go to users and select the one that you're using. After you have done that, click on the app data folder, open the local file and then double click on programs and within this file, you should be able to find a file named Enscape, which you should be opening. After that, open the render file, system data, textures, open Enscape, and finally click on common. All right, don't worry, even though there's a lot of folders that you have to open, this is nothing complicated. All you need to do after you're here is to take the original grass textures of this folder, maybe save it somewhere where you won't forget in case you want to put it back in Enscape, and then replace it with a new grass texture that you have downloaded from the link in the description. So now that you have replaced the file, we can check the results on our Enscape scene. And as you can see, I believe that this new grass texture looks much, much better. These are some of the best tips in Enscape, but if you want to see me create a realistic rendering in Enscape from scratch, watch the video right here. Mm -hmm.